It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 470, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, a very happy Friday to you and a very happy day before Cinco de Mayo. Welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. You send in the questions and I answer them for you. I love sharing health information with others, which is really why I do this show. And on Q&A Fridays, I get to answer your specific questions. And not only am I passionate about health and nutrition and fitness, but I do have degrees and credentials to back that up. I'm sure you're excited to hear today's question, so let's jump right to it as we optimize your life. Hey, Dr. Neil, my name is Jason. I had a question about exercise. I've heard time limits of at least 30 minutes, you know, two or three times a week, But my question is, is the length of time of the workout the most important part, or is it the time under tension? Thank you for your question, Jason. You mentioned the commonly cited 30 minutes of activity, three times per week recommendation. The American College of Sports Medicine, which is considered the most respected agency when it comes to exercise science in the U.S., defines exercise kind of close to what you said, 30 minutes of planned, structured, moderate intensity exercise three or more days per week. So the only slight modification to what you mentioned, Jason, is the fact that the exercise needs to be at a moderate intensity. This would be like brisk walking for most folks, which would be like walking at about three and a half miles per hour. So why do we have to walk for 30 minutes then? The thinking is that if we are performing exercises at a moderate intensity, then in order to make our heart and lungs healthier, we need to maintain that activity for long enough to achieve these benefits. But what happens if we increase the intensity? Do we still need exercise for 30 minutes? Before I answer that, I need to explain a couple of things first. Now, when we talk about exercise, there's this thing that the American College of Sports Medicine likes to refer to called the FITTVP or FITVP principle. And how perfect that when we talk about exercise science, there's a term called the FIT principle, right? We're dorky like that. But here's what those letters stand for. F is for frequency. I, intensity. T, time. The second T is type. The V is volume. And P, progression. So this acronym is the guiding principle behind getting fit and improving your overall fitness level. Now, the way this works is that as long as you modify at least one of the letters in FITVP, you're progressing. So going back to your question, Jason, this means that if you happen to work out for a shorter period of time, say less than 30 minutes, then you have decreased the T in the FITVP principle. So in order to make up for that, something else needs to increase. Maybe you increase the F or the frequency of your workouts. So basically, even though you're not working out for as long during each session, by increasing how often or frequently you exercise, you can still improve your fitness levels. Or let's say it's not possible to increase the frequency of your exercise because maybe you already work out five to seven days a week, but you still don't have time to squeeze in a full 30-minute workout, maybe you could consider increasing the I or intensity. So instead of walking for 30 minutes, you try jogging or running. Now, because you're increasing the intensity, you won't be able to exercise as long, but that's okay. Because by increasing the intensity, you're making your heart and lungs work harder, which will still help improve overall fitness. For me, there are days when I just want to sleep in a little longer before I start my workday. I want to squeeze in those extra few minutes of sleep. But at the same time, I don't want to skip exercising that day either. I know how much better I feel when I can get a workout in before heading off to work. So in this case, I know the T or time in the fit VP principle is gonna be decreased, but that's okay because I can change something else. I could change the frequency, the intensity, the T type of exercise, the volume or progression. So for me, I can change the type and intensity of activity I do so that I can still improve my overall fitness even though I have less time. So there are days when I'll complete a seven or eight minute workout. And even though the workout is brief, I've amped up the intensity so much that I will feel pretty white by the end. In case you're wondering what these routines look like, they would consist of something like performing 
200 double unders followed by 200 sit-ups as fast as I can, or doing 100 pull-ups, 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, and 100 body weight squats as fast as possible. Or you could run a mile as fast as you can, which should take less than 10 minutes for those without any underlying injuries or health conditions. So the great news about exercise and improving fitness is that there are many ways to approach it. The bottom line is that each exercise session does not have to last 30 minutes every single time. As long as you aim to increase at least one of the Fit VP components, you're still making progress toward your goals. Thank you again for the question, Jason. You'll be entered into a very small raffle every month to win a book. And if you wanna be in the raffle, send me an audio question. You can do that at oldpodcast.com or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call in your question. The number is 61 I love ohd Both methods are in this episode's description, which you can find at oldpodcast.com. Thank you for listening every day and all the way through. I hope you had a wonderful week and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you back here on Monday where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together, we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.